No. Game news. Yeah, news. Let's see what happens here. All right, Twitch. How's it going? Dr. Nathan Cashin again. I am uh, continuing my experimenting with different types of content, different things that I could do here on Twitch and probably over on YouTube as well. Um, probably upload this over to YouTube. And so uh, today is December 14th, 2020. And what I've always thought that we need, you know, I've, I've done my podcast for a few years, haven't done it in a couple of years now, um, want to start again, also want to maybe do some others, of course, <laughs> do I have time for any of this? No, but it, I think about it all the time, and I really um, think that one thing that's missing within chiropractic is a weekly news discussion show. Uh, this is so common in, in gaming, in tech, in politics, of course. Um, there are just so many uh, shows like this, and I think, I think there's a space for it. I think it would be very valuable for a lot of people. And so that's what I'm going to try out today is uh, talking about this week in chiropractic. Maybe, maybe I call it Twitch. I don't know. That's probably a little too obvious. Um, we'll talk about news. We'll talk about... Uh, you know, maybe some of the latest research that's been published in the past week. Talk about, oh, just anything in, in popular culture that is related to chiropractic as well. And, uh, and if anybody's out there watching, you can make some suggestions and let me know what you want to do. So trying this out, this is a little bit uh, new for me, kind of got a new setup, got... Um, using Streamlabs here and trying to figure out the technology. It's fun. I like geeking out on this stuff. Um, but let's let's go ahead and talk about some news in chiropractic for the week preceding. It's, it's the week preceding December 12th. Um, what we're going to look at today is uh, starting off with some good news, with kind of good heartfelt type stuff. Is this just fabulous video that uh, from a classmate of mine, and, and you've probably seen it on um, on social media now, it's kind of making the rounds from Doc Morris, which is a German pharmaceutical company in which they uh, shared this beautiful Christmas message, which if you are a chiropractor who cares about patient-specific function, uh, you know, activities of daily living, if you are uh, interested in rehab, and even if you're a strength and conditioning coach on the side, man, this video just really gives you the feels. I shared it on a couple of groups, and yeah, a couple people said, hey, my wife and I are sitting here crying, um, so I'm not going to play the audio, because if I post this to YouTube, I could get banned, but you know, this old man, you see him pulling out an old kettlebell, an old rusty kettlebell that's Probably a good size one too. Gosh, uh, it looks about the size of mine, which is I think a forty-four pound something like that. And I'm not going to spoil it for you, but but by the end of it, you see what he's doing. And uh, gosh, just such a great story. Um, interesting that it comes from a pharmaceutical company. Of course, I think in Germany, pharmaceuticals, uh, pharmaceutical companies are much more broad in their scopes. They're not just doing drugs. They're doing supplements. They're doing wellness and that type of stuff. Uh, Doc Morris is the Europe's largest mail order pharmacy, and they claim to gradually be transforming from a pure pharmaceutical retailer to a digital health 
advisor and this video certainly fits that bill. So head on over to YouTube or Instagram. Uh, I've reposted it on Explain Chiropractic to my stories. Great, great video for the holiday season. All right, let's talk about chiropractic in the, u in the news. Uh, this coming from CBS News, she owes 581000 in student loans and the bill is coming due. And who is she? Well, she is uh, Lauren Schreiber, Schreiber, a chiropractor in, uh, I want to say it's Iowa, in Georgia, went to chiropractic school in Georgia, um, moved back to her hometown, which is a smaller town. This does include, by the way, so 581000 that's a lot, right? Average chiropractors coming out of school, during my time at least, uh, five-ish years ago, were coming out with 200 probably maybe even a little bit more. I came out with 240, add on the interest $250,000 in student loans. Uh, she has some uh, undergraduate loans, master degree, and then her chiropractic degree totaling nearly $600,000. What really concerns me, she's, she moved back to Troy, Illinois to be near family. She was paying $100 a month on her loans before COVID and everything happened when uh, loan repayments were frozen. <laughs> that is not nearly enough. A hundred dollars a month is not even going to touch the interest on a loan this size. Uh, now we don't know anything about her situation and anything about her job, whether she's a, uh, an independent contractor, an associate, whether she's running her own clinic and just uh, you know, that's all she can afford. Um, but that is going to be really hard to pay down student loans at $100 a month. But it really is um, a great article to bring awareness to this rising student debt for everybody, especially those in healthcare, and uh, and really the, the incompatibility almost, the discrepancy between the cost of tuition for an advanced degree like chiropractic and the average income, which is not what the schools tell you, right? At least in my area, when I graduated, the average graduating doctor was coming out making somewhere around thirty, forty thousand dollars a year. Speaking of which, I talked to dental hygienists, which were making more than that. And so uh, really important to bring this issue to light and to be talking about it in the news. Also in the news, cracking your back, is it okay? Uh, and why does it feel so good? So this is coming from the Sydney Morning Herald down in Australia. Uh, and actually, qu I thought quite a good uh, discussion about why cracking your back feels so good and should you do it. They interviewed uh, Dr. Giovanni Ferreira, a physiotherapist at University of S uh, Sydney. And... Um, you know, they brought up, this physiotherapist brought up this physiological process known as trimonucleation, right? It's not bones cracking. It's not bones being pushed back into place. Uh, it, and it's not actually gas being released. The, the latest research on trimonucleation is that it's as the joint are separated, it creates uh, changes in pressure, which actually causes a bubble to be formed. And that potentially is what create is what is creating the popping noise, and uh, they were you know referred to this video, a real time MRI video of a joint cracking, and this was a study done by Greg Kochuk and Jerome Fryer of Dynamic Disc Designs and others, who uh, <laughs> created a contraft contraption to pull on a finger and to get that. Uh, there we go, get that cavitation or tribonucleation. And uh, it's a good, it's probably the, you know, the latest understanding of how this works. Also mentioned in the article is Dr. Aaron Downey, a lecturer at Macquarie University's Department of Chiropractic, who explained that uh, the adjustment provides movement into the spinal joints, and this is thought to provide some pain relief. It provides a sense of muscle stretch as well. Uh, Dr. Aaron Downey is one of the Carl Fellows, uh, that is a chiropractic research group for younger researchers. So 
pretty cool to see some relatively accurate information coming out in the news. The joint chiropractic franchise was named a top growth franchise by Entrepreneur Magazine. It was ranked uh, number 59 out of 150 companies with the greatest positive franchise unit growth in North America. So the joint is expanding and they continue to do well despite some controversy over their practicing during the COVID pandemic, not closing down, being a wellness model that was brought into question whether they should be seeing patients since wellness is not necessarily a, uh, a critical resource or an essential business at the time. Um, full disclosure, I on a whim bought some stock uh, from the joint early on. Do not follow my financial advice, uh, but it did end up being uh, advantageous. I only bought like, I don't know, three shares or something. I dabble in, in stocks and I have no idea what I'm doing and I've had really good luck, but also really horrible luck. So um, I just do want to disclose that as I'm talking about something like the joint. Um, another <laughs> uh, interesting story in popular news. It's all about the cracking noise, the unlikely cult of the online chiropractor. Uh, this coming out of The Guardian in the UK and a discussion around why people like to watch chiropractic videos online. It's part of the ASMR craze. It may not always be exactly what is meant by ASMR, um, but I'm sure you guys have seen it, right? Joseph Cipriano, um, uh, uh, Doc Bo, I think it is, right? The, the big <laughs> bodybuilding martial arts, uh, mixed martial art type guy who uses a freaking hammer and a chisel on his doctors. Um, others who I don't want to name because they, you know, are using really questionable practices, clickbaity practices of uh, the girls in yoga pants or even less and even uh, influencers with questionable uh, content on their channels. So uh, interesting read about why uh, people like to watch this and some interviews with Joseph Cipriano who's risen to YouTube fame using the Y strap which not a lot of people are a big fan of that but it gets views right I mean it, it, more and more this is not about marketing your practice it's becoming an alternative way to practice you can make thousands if not tens and may possibly even hundreds of thousands of dollars a month doing YouTube videos of patient care certainly questionable ethics uh, i would assume they're getting release forms from these patients but to give a discount if you agree to that seems to be a bit manipulative and not in a good way other doctors uh other chiropractors interviewed were chris zano um dr cody aka dr cody on tiktok who has two point five million followers on TikTok now. And um, I think uh, some input from a physiotherapist here as well. I really don't know how I feel about patient care being shown in this way. I mean, I think it's educational to show what chiropractors do. I think it's important that we understand that, but there have been just too many, too many stories in the past um, you know, with Dr. Ian down in Australia, who adjusted the infant, and that did not look good for the profession. Let's move on to some research and kind of political news as well. So uh, th this week in the Journal of Chiropractic Humanities, the Federal Employees Compensation Act, the mandating the use of x-ray for chiropractic management of federal employees, an exploration of concerns and a call to action. I don't know about you, but I did not know this. In 1974, an amendment to the Federal Employees Compensation Act mandated that for chiropractors to provide service to federal workers and get reimbursed, they had to have spinal x-rays prior to doing this. Now, in that time, it was still fairly common practice, right? Choosing widely, wisely hadn't come out. Um, it was common for chiropractors to have x-rays, uh, but to 
to mandate that and for this to be in place uh, 45 years later is just, I think, kind of crazy. And so this paper is a discussion of why that needs to be changed so that chiropractors can get reimbursed for treating federal employees without taking unnecessary imaging. There's so much debate in the profession about this right now. I'm, I am of the opinion that the radiation exposure is negligible, but that there are plenty of other reasons why we do not want to take routine spinal imaging of our patients. Big news this weekend, uh, Wall, Street Wall Street Journal published an opinion piece about President-elect Biden's wife, the, the future first lady, Dr. Jill Biden, who has a doctorate in education. And uh, non-Dr. Joseph Epstein wrote an opinion saying that Jill Biden should think about dropping the doctorate from her name and called her Mrs. Biden, Jill, and kiddo called her kiddo claiming that oh well that's what joseph biden calls her man this is really blown up uh hashtag call her doctor is trending now on twitter um the, the issue here is number one there's the obvious misogynistic uh implications here that they are, are diminishing or devaluing this achievement by a female doctor earned a doctorate in education should be called doctor um, and that's nothing new there's an article in the New York Times in 2018 uh, an opinion article saying women own your doctor titles and encouraging to put it on Twitter put it out there use the doctor title just as men do I find this interesting because it's also relevant to chiropractic because we're <laughs> we're not real doctors right we're not MDs, we're not medical doctors, so we can't be called doctors. Um, but that's that's almost people misunderstand the title doctor. And r there's a really great discussion of this by um, Gad Saad, who's an author of the Parasitic Mind, and a scientist, a a um, MBA and a PhD, who discusses the history of the title doctor, and it. Right. Originally, it was used for the folks holding doctorates, e.g. doctors of the church and other academics, before eventually being used by medical doctors. Medical doctors have um, usurped the title. They have taken it, and, and it's become synonymous in culture with medical doctor or physician. But that is not the origins of it. There are many other examples of people who use doctor. Uh, I plan on doing a video about this. I mean, just think. Uh, uh, one of my favorites is Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson, an astrophysicist. He has a PhD in astrophysics, uh, not a medical doctor. Uh, dentists use the title doctor, and there, right, there's the DDS degree and the DMD degree, but both can use the title doctor, orthodontist, uh, which is a, a, a specialty in dentistry. Um, physical therapist, now the doctor of physical therapy degree can be a... <laughs> I love that one of the comments here mentioned Indiana Jones, Dr. Jones. He's a freaking archaeologist and uses the title doctor. So uh, I really like this. Dr. Gad called out uh, to the imbeciles who argue that it is silly for a PhD traveling on a plane to refer themselves as doctor because, bro, heart attack, you are truly lobotomized. Of course, a neuroscientist with a PhD, as he says, should not be coming up to the front of the plane to help out somebody with a heart attack. Should chiropractors who are doctors in chiropractic, that's, a, that's another discussion. Um, I think there's a role for them on in-flight emergencies, uh, but they do need to disclose their qualifications, as should any physician or a nurse. A nurse is probably even better. A nurse and EMT is probably the best person on, during an in-flight emergency to come up and help because Doctors don't do that type of critical care hands-on as often as nurses and EMTs. So really interesting discussion. Uh, by the way, Epstein, the author of the op-ed, was 
pretty much denounced by Northwestern, where he was on faculty, and I believe that's where also where he graduated. Um, the university put out a statement saying Northwestern is firmly committed to equity, diversity, and inclusion, and strongly disagrees with Mr. Epstein's misogynistic views, and removed him um, from the site. So, uh, very interesting discussion about doctor stuff, very interesting discussions around uh, chiropractic in popular news, and I think it's great. And so <coughs> that's about it for uh, this week in chiropractic, the week of December 14th, 2020. We're rounding out the year. It's been a horrible year, and hopefully in the next couple weeks and the year to come will bring up some cool things. So if you guys can let me know what you think about this format of a discussion. I can post this to YouTube. I'll edit the audio, post it as a podcast, um, and send me a link, send me, you know, anything that you think is worthy of discussion in the world of chiropractic. And I hope to hear uh, your feedback on this. And I think this was fun and enjoyable, a 20 to 30 minute show talking about the, the recent news, I think is something that many people can get behind and, and find valuable during their commutes back to the clinic um, or while they're working out in the gym. So head on over to Exploring Cairo on Instagram, on Twitter, and now on Twitch, as well as searching for Exploring Chiropractic on YouTube and on Facebook. And keep an eye out on the podcast feeds uh, for a revival of Exploring Chiropractic in the new year with some interviews, I'm hoping, of some really well-known chiropractors, as well as a series on chiropractors who are doing something other than chiropractic as their main source of income. Thanks for watching. We'll ch check you guys on the next one.